This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody! It is Alex Bennett, and uh, you can't see me right now. Well, actually, uh, you could see me if I just did this, and you could see me, but you're not going to see me for about the next 25 minutes, because we've got a guest, and then after that, we'll have our citizens panel, and we ramble on till uh, midnight tonight, Eastern Daylight Time. But in the meantime, it's time for us to check in with an old friend. Uh, who we kind of always, whenever we go to him, we go to him in a different way than you normally would go to a guest, all right? Uh, and, of course, uh, well, let's not dally. Let's uh, let's uh, uh, put him on. Where do I go now? Oh, here's where I was. See, I have to push. You see, the reason I don't look directly in the camera is because I'm having to look at all the other stuff that I'm doing. It's what's called a self-switched show. But here we go, all right? Okay. So anyway, what we're going to do is that we always like to call Stephen Pearl cold because he always has something hilarious to say. There we go. Uh huh. Take three. Take three. Take three. Take three. Uh, okay. Uh, how are you? Hello, Stephen. Is it working? Uh, Hello. Yeah. Test me one, two. It's, it's working. It was a little loud in the beginning, but it's we're fine now. We're fine now. Good. I'm loud all the time. Yeah, Boy, yeah. did I pick the wrong week to become Kathy Griffin's manager? Sheesh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the timing. I ruined. Well, you know, that's a good place to start talking today is about that whole situation with Kathy Griffin. Well, now, let's, 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 let's first of all say that Kathy Griffin basically is a cunt. Uh, and I'm saying that uh, in the nicest possible way. I mean, where yeah, Kathy Griffin is concerned. Rare, so you don't mean it in a bad way. I mean, the nicest possible way. Yeah, I mean, he is. He comes with a K. It's the nicest, yeah, it's, soft K. Well, you, 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 she, you've lived in L.A. She does not have a good reputation as a human being, right? No, no. I went to a party in her house. She acted like I wasn't there, and I'm glad I took a big dump in her bathtub. Fuck yeah. you, Kathy. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so he, Blame it on the maid. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, the deal is that that uh, she's not uh, she's not a person that I'm like the idea of defending. All right. Yeah, I understand. But, you know, uh, and, and many times you have to defend those people you can't stand. I mean, like I don't like Sean. Sure. I don't like Sean Hannity, but I don't like what Media Matters is doing to him. So in this case, I'm on his side. You know. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, Kathy Griffin, in case people don't know, did a photo shoot in which she was holding a bloody, decapitated head of Donald Trump or something that looked to be like Donald Trump. It actually was yeah. a very bad uh, modeling of his head. But anyway. Balloon with straw. With, with, with the, and and the, in, the, in the video, the blood is dripping and all of that. Well, everybody went fucking bananas over this thing. Yeah. <laughs> and I've got a defender as a comedian. You know, she has the right. She has, she has been, the right to do it, definitely. Free freedom of the press, freedom of speech and all that. But, but yeah, it's, it's pretty nasty. Well, you know, it, 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 it's nasty. And it, it, perhaps you and I wouldn't do it. Well, you wouldn't even do it because would you do it? You're in bad taste. No, I wouldn't do anything like that. I'd make fun of the guy. It would, there's a million other ways to do it. But, no, I wouldn't come up with a severed head, you know. Yeah, yeah exactly. A, a long time ago, a long time ago, I held up a uh, replica of Richard Nixon's stubbed pinky toe on a radio show, and I caught hot hell for that. Boy, was I in hot water. Was that I my, can relate. Was that my radio show, by any chance? Yes, it was a, it was a simpler time. We all remember it. Yeah, but, no, I mean, nothing like that. But, you know, but you, the, no, you, pink, pinky toe is funny, okay? Yeah. All right? This was not particularly funny. That's it what, wasn't funny. If it was, if she did something funny, I would, I would understand it, or biting or something. This was just like vicious and bloody, and you have people on the other side who are cutting people's heads off and holding them up. So I, you know, I, I didn't appreciate what she did, you know, and I, I could go pretty far but, with bad but, taste. But uh, the question is, will you defend her right to do it? 
I defend her right to do it, and I defend uh, her right to be a cunt, and I defend her right to not make me laugh now, ever. Now, as, and uh, I defend my right to not have anything to do with her. Now, as, as a result, CNN, who uses her usually on their New Year's Eve uh, festivities with uh, Anderson Cooper, has uh, fired her from that job. There you go. Uh, Bye-bye. That's 364 well, more days to go. No, well, it's the only job she had. Let's face it. Uh, I think she yeah. was on that, that E thing with clothes and stuff and lasted two weeks, and then they God. fired her from yeah, that. Yeah, the one. D list, whatever it is. But anyway, she, um, uh, uh, you know, she did this thing, and they fire her, which is an immediate yeah. kind of gut-level, let's fire her because we don't want to look bad. Well, yeah. you know, by the time New Year's comes, everybody's going to forget this fucking thing. Oh, sure. You know? Sure. So it's idiotic on a, a part of, of uh, number one, CNN, who believes in the right of free speech, I would imagine, especially yeah. their own, uh, to, to do this thing. So in a way, uh -huh. I feel sorry for Seth, Kathy Griffin. I mean, she made a big mistake. She then, the worst thing was she, rec she recanted it. Have you ever recanted a joke you ever did? Have you ever oh, God, gone no. anywhere? Okay, I'll think of a sicker one. <laughs> have, have you ever gone anywhere and said... Uh, I am not. I, I, I'm not responsible for this. I'm so sorry uh, that I did it, and uh, I uh, I hereby uh, apologize to everybody. Well, when she apologized, hey, you know what, Clyde? Me and Sinatra never apologize, baby. If I make a mistake, I'll buy him a Rembrandt or a car, but we don't apologize. Exactly. But the thing is, <laughs> once you apologize, all the people that are your fans are going to go, "What a pussy," you know? Yeah. Uh, she lost, but she did roll her eyes while she uh, did, did the apology. So, like, oh, I have to do this now. So, who the fuck knows what she thought? Well, I She's an evil little scarecrow. Steer clear of her. You see her run. Run like the wind. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, so I find myself having to defend this cunt for what she <laughs> did. I, I, I don't, I you know, do I think it's in good or bad taste? I, I haven't figured that one out. And, quite frankly, I have, more, yeah. I have less hours left in my life to ponder that. There you go. It's not worth it. It's not worth uh, mulling over. Yeah, but uh, but I still I will defend her right to do it, and I'll defend any comedian's right to say anything he wants to on stage without Fairly. fear of losing Fairly. work, overdoing it, or anything else. Mm -hmm. But in these uh -huh. politically correct times, I mean, you must do. Do you no ever problem. get worried when you go on stage and all of a sudden you're not going to be politically correct and never ask back to that club again? Oh, it's insane. Yeah. Or that college. Well, God, I don't do college. I haven't done college in years. But uh, even Jerry Seinfeld won't do them, and he's as clean as they come. He's cleaner than ivory soap. So, yeah, the times have changed, and it's too damn PC. And, oh, I just don't know what to do. I'm wringing my hands. Are colleges finding it hard to get comics to come turn out? Because I don't know who they get. I have no idea who they get. Uh, I have probably somebody of that age who does whatever they think is funny, millennials or, you know, man bun people or whatever they call them. So. Yeah. But, you know, I mean... If you try and do political comedy, you're you're dead in the water. I mean, I talked to dead in the water. I talked to Durst. Yep. I talked to Durst about this all the time. He says it's actually in some ways it's gotten better. In some ways it's gotten worse. It's gotten better because the material is there. It's gotten yeah. it's gotten worse because people will walk out on you. You know, uh -huh. he has to and and it used to be. He said he used to go after both sides. And he used to try and be magnanimous about uh -huh. the whole thing. And he yeah. said, now he just goes after Trump. Fuck it. You know, yeah. if they can't take well, a joke, to. fuck it. Yeah, that's he has to. That's what they're going to do. You ain't going to get many gigs in South Carolina, I'll tell you that. Well, I mean, he says, be as people walk out on him. He has club owners who never, you know, say, well, never again with you. You know, yeah, why? Because, because of his political opinion? I'm a political comic. You hired me as a political comic. Yeah. <laughs> what do you what yeah. do you expect? You know, that I'm gonna say how wonderful Donald Trump is? That's not funny. <laughs> God, there's a hundred country singers who'll do that. Yeah, and they're meant not meant to be comics. Oh, country singers yeah. are in the worst shape. I mean, God forbid some of them hate Trump. They can't say it. Oh, they'll never work. You saw what happened to the Dixie Chicks. I was going to say One of them that. waited on me the other day at Denny's. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, I remember you. You were the one with the bass. Yeah. Well, they they came. Out there, you want to share for them pancakes? Well, they came back, 
And they, they, when they came back, they recorded a song that just said, you know, I'm not going to take this anymore, or whatever. I can't remember what the song was. And it was a big hit. Uh, and oh, the, album, the, the, al- the album was a big hit. But somehow along the line, I think they've decided to kind of pack it in. I haven't heard of them doing anything. Uh-huh. But, man, they were good, too. They were really good. Yeah, it, it's the Mu- Dixie Chick now. So musically. Going on, going on tour with the Golden Girl. The Survivors Tour. Yeah, well, probably they were. They even probably had problems from that because they probably had women going. We're not chicks. We're women. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're fifty now. Stop calling yourself a chick. Well, it's still the Beach Boys, and they're in their nineties. No, now. but I miss them because they were good. You know, yeah. I enjoyed their music is on my iPhone. I listen to it all mm-hmm. the time. You know, very talented, very talented, and very, guy. very country, very authentically country. Sure. You know. Mm-hmm. Which reminds me, oh, they were good. You you like old music, really old music, right? Oh yeah, the old timey, good old stuff. Sure, um, back in the days of diphtheria and polio, who could forget? On PBS, they're running a show called American Epic. Uh huh. And it's all it's only three episodes, and it's about uh, the record companies at a certain point. Decided rather than leave New York, you know, to leave New York, leave Los Angeles, leave the major places they were recording. This was back in the, th- you know, l- uh, I guess late twenties, early thirties, and go uh-huh. out into the countryside and record all these people who were doing music, uh, yeah. in in places like Appalachia and so on. Mm-hmm. And the first people they do, obviously, are probably the people who established that whole milieu which were the Carter family. And yep. then they go to people you never heard of in your life. Uh, the the elder, I can't remember the guy's name now, but he was like, yeah, he was a preacher, and he did his preaching on disc. And, uh-huh. and, and there was also some music that came out of it as well. And then they talked about the Memphis Jug Band, which they said uh-huh. was very sure. influential on music today. And then they, they all lead it up to the music today and how it has been influenced by these people you never heard of. It's a very uh, scholarly sure. piece. I think you'd really enjoy it. Oh, okay. What's it called again? It's called American, American Epic. American Epic. I will look that it's up. It's on PBS. It's not on air. Probably on YouTube in a week. They just put up their third. Uh, it, 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 they just put up their third episode. Uh, oh, okay. And, cool. and, I will and, check that out. And that's it for the season, you know. But it, it's uh, just only very, three. It's only got three. It's very well done. I mean, it, it, it's on a subject matter that. I think everybody's kind of forgotten about. And people, literary recording artists you never heard of. In fact, they had to go back. In the case of uh, this elder, what's his name? They only had, I think, wait a minute, no, was it he or no, somebody else. They only had one picture that was ever taken of him. So they have to keep... Oh, there's lots of guys like that, like Blind Blake or Blind Lemon Jefferson or uh, mostly the blind guys. (laughs) There's like one picture and uh, it might be like scrawled autograph, cordially yours and... Yeah, that's it. Nobody knows. You know, disappeared in 1934 after cutting his last sides. He was never heard from again. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and these, yeah. these guys just, uh, just, you know, they did their recordings and then they disappeared. You know, mm-hmm. but but yet, for instance, uh, there was a I can't remember the musician, uh, but Howling Wolf studied under him. You know. And became what Howling oh, Wolf became. Oh, who was the guy? I, I did just watch something. Howling Wolf. Who was it? He studied under. It wasn't Robert Johnson. No, no, uh, no. no. God, I forget. I, yeah, I just mentioned some uh, known blues guy. I think they mentioned Robert started. Johnson as actually being a protege of this guy as well. Um, wow. It was some okay, he was some way guy, back now. And it, I think it was one of the people who was in the Memphis Jug <laughs> Band. And he just, you know, then they list how Howling Wolf then influenced the Rolling Stones and how the Rolling Stones, blah, blah, blah. You know, I mean, yeah. th- these were people who were very seminal and that, hey, I never heard of before in my life. You uh, know, sure, you, you, sure. May, you may have actually because you're, you know, you're, you're really up on all that, that kind of well, stuff. Well, I'm, I'm no encyclopedia. Johnny Winter knew everything. He was like, he was the Britannica, whatever. He was Google on that stuff. But uh, uh, I know some. I, I don't know it all, though. I like to know it all. Yeah, I mean, like for instance, the one we all know is Robert Johnson because I think sure. uh, the Rolling, not the Rolling Stones, Led Zeppelin did Love in Vain. Who did Love in Vain? Ro- Rolling Stones. Uh, the or? Rolling Stones did it. Yeah. yeah, Robert Johnson did it first, of course. And yeah, and, and when that when that finally came out, 
all of a sudden, everybody started seeking out Robert Johnson's m- music, and all of a sudden, they started releasing Robert Johnson LPs. Sure. You know, taken from the, the Crossroads, which the Cream covered, and uh, the last one that yeah. covered. Uh, but uh, next, they're going to do um, the, on American Epic. The third episode includes Hawaiian music. Ah, you know, it, 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 <laughs> and, <laughs> and they have these huge trucks that went out with uh, battery-operated recording devices. And wow. they literally went out with the best recording devices of the day, which, you know, you had to do it in one take because they put the needle down, you started oh, singing. Sure. It's and going it, out to the wax or whatever. They cut it into the wax, and what was amazing is the wax would all go to the center of the record in a clump. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> and uh, how, how it did that, I have no idea. I think they just, yeah. you know. Uh, but the, the the recording devices were ancient, but they were huge. They had to put them in a whole big, huge truck and drive them down south oh, sure. or drive them into the Appalachians with all these roads that were just <laughs> rutted from mud, you know. Sure. And, oh, man. And, uh, you know, the first story, of course, is about the Carter family, which, you know, people go, who's the Carter family? Well, you heard June Carter. She was married to yep. – yeah, but she was the daughter. That they had Maybell yeah. and they had um, uh, 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 JP was the was the was the man and uh, who's the other one uh, Sarah Sarah Carter and uh-huh. um, it was just it was amazing and at a certain point I think JP left the group he he divorced Sarah is what happened they or they uh-huh. got divorced and he just kind of went into almost obscurity but he was mm-hmm. the brains behind the outfit he's the guy that took them to a town you know. 50 miles away through rutted roads to go to the audition to sing. And they became, huh. they became the first family of, sure. of American yeah. country music. And, right. and they, they, would, they would have never been discovered had, the, had these record companies not said, look, we're not just going to stay in New York. We're not going to just stay on the West Coast. We're going to send people out to record this stuff. And, wow, and, and good all, idea, too. All they'd have to do is pass by a house with a porch, and there was somebody out in the porch playing a banjo. Yeah, it, just, it came to them. Yeah, it was amazing. Just, I mean, yeah, just amazing. That's how they found Muddy Waters originally on Stovall's Plantation, Mississippi. Alan Lomax went down yeah. looking for Robert Johnson to record him, but he was already dead, I believe. And then uh, he ran into Muddy. Well, I can sing and play, and I uh, made a few sides with him. Yeah, and later he didn't make it big till he went up to Chicago a few uh, like the next year. I think it's forty three. There. Now there there was and a guy. His first record. There was a guy. There's a great movie out called Cadillac Records, which is the history. Yeah, sure, I see that. Yeah, Be- great movie actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and all the people that Leonard Chess dug up. I mean, people like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, uh, sure, Little Walter, Little Walter. All these guys were people who were down south, right? And, yep. they, and they needed to be discovered, and he didn't. Well, disco- all, he, most, he, he most did. of them came up to Chicago. They were already there, and they just came to him. And so he had the, he had a nightclub, then he started the record company. So uh, they played for little label, labels here and there, and then they go to Chess. That was the one to go to in well, Chicago. Well, well, he did. He did pretty damn. He did pretty. He, what he did is he took what Lomax I think had found, and and added them to his roster. But you know, he had, oh, yeah, he, had, sure. he had he had Bo Diddley. Sure did. Chuck yeah. Berry. Chuck, well, Chuck Berry. All those, I hits, mean, all those hits were on Chess Records. Yeah. I mean, Chuck Berry, you know, I always argue with certain people when I say Chuck Berry invented rock and roll. And yep. and everybody goes, oh, what about Rocket 88, uh, Ike Turner, you know? And, and I go, no, because he's not the first person who ever used the term rock and roll in a song. Mm-hmm. You know, he just did his music, and that was it. But rock and yeah. roll was invented by Chuck Berry. <laughs> he did. It was, it was, you, could, you could call it R&B before that, or real who, R&B. Who to this day becomes today, the greatest progenitor. Really he becomes the greatest progenitor of all the rock and roll that's fallen. You know? Oh, it was amazing. Everyone wanted to be like Chuck Berry. Except Little Richard. He was an old man. And they, or old, whatever well, he was. Well, he came, he came from a different section, though. He came from, uh, he came from New Orleans. He was part of yeah, that exactly. whole thing. Making Georgia, making Georgia, really Richard. Yeah, but I mean, he 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 came from uh, he was down in New Orleans. That's where he recorded most of those uh, yeah. those hits of his. And uh, in fact, Fats Domino is from that area too, of course. Yeah. So, so they don't fall into this same category of that seminal sound that Chuck Berry created. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. when you think rock and roll, you think of Chuck Berry. 
Gurley. So John pe- Lennon himself, you give rock and roll another name, he'd call it Chuck Berry. Did he say that? Yep, when he introduced them on the Mike Douglas show. Oh, wow. When they, they sang Memphis together in different keys, and Yoko was screaming on the whole thing. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks for ruining a magic yeah, moment. Yeah, long distance information. Yo, 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 shoot her, shoot her. Yeah, he oh, was... You know, brave, brave. He was maybe the brightest guy in the, of the whole bunch. I mean, mentally. Mm-hmm. I think it must have had an incredible IQ because he just... He he knew stuff, and I got to tell oh, you, yeah. best lyricist I ever heard in my life outside. Oh, incredible! Outside, incredible. All American, growing up, teenage, uh, everything. Man. When I think of the three great lyricists of the of the twentieth century, I think of John Lennon, I think mm-hmm. of Cole Porter. How diverse is that? And then I yeah. think, <laughs> and I think of Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry, um, because my favorite uh, thing of his in. in uh, uh, Little Miss Rock and Roller, I think was the name of the song. I can't remember the, the tune, that, uh, but he they had an alternate recording he made in which he used the line, uh, "She must be good, good because bad things don't draw crowds." No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> heavy baby, heavy baby. She the must be good thinking. because bad things don't draw crowds. I Bad mean, don't draw crowds. and he would make up words that we never thought ever existed, like uh, a coolerator for original. Cool, uh, don't want, don't want your botheration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Botheration. Yeah, I mean, but what just great bright lyrics, and of course, my favorite mm-hmm. is, of course, uh, I boogied in the basement, I boogied in the hall, I boogied in, in my finger, hall. and I wrote it on the wall. <laughs> oh my God, arrest that man! Or I wiped it on the wall. <laughs> I mean, Go over that man's taxes. Get him on something. I mean, that 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 that, that was a great lyric, you know. And the oh, whole great. the whole I song goes the Thank whole song goes through every hour of the night. You know? Oh yeah, I I saw him do it and cover the whole clock, <laughs> and the crowd went nuts. Yeah, yeah, it was a sight to see. The, you, you you saw Chuck Berry. I saw him twice. I saw him once in '72 on an oldie show which a lot of which was used in the movie Let the Good Times Roll, a 1973 film about the 50s that had uh, an oldies concert in L.A. and an oldies concert in New York that I went to with Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, and they jammed. Oh. And the Angels and the five, the new Five Satins and the new Coasters and uh, even Meathead, Rob Reiner, introduced, uh, I think, the, the Five Satins or the Coasters, one of those bands. Wow. But Chuck kicked ass, and he did that. He, record, he did Dingling that night before it was released. I remember that. That became a big hit, and he did the, the whole... Uh, reeling and rocking was going. Uh, look at that clock! I was a quarter to two. He did it all. Did the whole clock. Wow! And that was cool. And I saw him again in '79 in uh, the old Waldorf when I first came to San Francisco. That was the way. Were those the days when he was? That was fun. Were those the days when he was still doing the duck walk? Oh sure, he did the duck walk both times. In fact, you can see it if you uh, go to YouTube and watch the movie "Let the Good Times Roll," which is on there. Him and Bo Diddley did uh, the duck walk towards each other from separate sides of the stage. You should have seen it. Well, that's where you can. Yeah, I was there. It was amazing. Chuck and Bo duck you, walking you, towards each so other. You're so lucky. And the second time you saw him, second time was in early '79 at the old Waldorf. Remember that? That flick yeah. club with Jason. That was adjacent to the Punchline. And I, I just went. I was. I just come to San Francisco to scope it out. See if I wanted to live here. And uh, I saw Chuck Berry was playing. So I think I'll go. So I just went by and myself. I, I and compa- had a good old time. How, what, what was the difference in time between the two periods? Uh, one was April '72, and the other one was like February '79. So, so was, it, was there a difference in his energy by then? No, he was great on both of them. He had a better pickup band on uh, the New York one. Uh, it was was it the. Uh, who it was because he always used player. a pickup band, he never had his own. Oh, band. yeah, yeah, he just because you know, everybody knew his stuff, and uh, yeah, hopefully, yeah. So, it, uh, it, there was a good band the second time, but the first one just totally kicked that. It was funny when he did when he did a, a film that uh, he was in with Chuck Richard, uh, <laughs> Richards, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's the name I'm looking Keith for? Richards. He, Keith Richards, he, yeah, Hell, Hell Rock and Roll, yeah, yeah, he. Uh, he 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 just uh, you know it, it, Richards could just play anything that he had to play. He didn't even have to rehearse sure. because everybody knew sure. those riffs. Everybody, yeah, knew everybody. Those riffs. Any any musician worth as anything knows Chuck Berry. 
just know the key he plays it in, and there you go. Coming like close. John Paris used to back him up whenever he came to New York. We're running out of time, and I want to tell you about the one concert no. I went to. When I will, we'll do it again next week. Uh, we'll uh, do it again. I'll be here. The, the, one, the one concert I went to that I will remember forever is I was a kid at the time. I was, I think, I was uh, eighteen, something like that, seventeen. And I was dragged over to Oakland by a black friend of mine to an all-black, they had things called dances, right? Uh-huh. And the lead act was Ray Charles. And I, and I went to see, because Ray Charles was going to be playing, because I loved Ray Charles. Sure. And the opening act was some obscure act called Ike and Tina Turner. Oh, my God. So I went to, and it was a dance. It wasn't, it was people out on the floor dancing to the music. You know, it wasn't like a bunch of uh-huh. seats and everybody's sitting in the seats. Yeah, just get out there and dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing oh, stuff. Oh, excellent. That must have been fun. That first concert was a good first concert to see. Uh, yeah, it was, it was, I was waiting for my first tooth to come in then. But. Yes, I think so. Or maybe you were waiting to come out of your mother's womb. I don't know. No, uh, I, was, yeah. I was around then, but uh, yeah. 57 probably. I yeah. was around yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. I turned. We saw Ike and Tina. Man, the girl was pretty, except for the black eye and the broken nose. <laughs> from that. And with that, we'll leave. I, we'll have to leave okay. now. But we will return again <laughs> next week with a man named Stephen Pearl. Thanks, Stephen. Back with more astonishing tales of life and show business, my friend. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello and welcome back, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, this is The Ramble. And uh, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, you can see all the action uh, right as it's happening. And we seem to be having a fairly good signal tonight. Some dropped frames, but we'll worry about that as the show goes on. Uh, some nights it's a great video, and other nights it, uh, it has some problems. Now, what I do is I bring up Skype. And I open up the Skype lines because what this is, this uh, the Skype lines enable us to deal with a group of people we call the Citizens Panel. That means it's not just one person talking to me at a time. It can be upwards to nine people if, in fact, people want to show up and, and call me. And excuse me if I'm working on this at the same time because I'm self-switching this whole show. But anyway, our lines are open if anybody wants to join us. Usually we get anywhere. We usually, a lot of times we have a, what we call a full house, and that means everybody. Uh, but that's uh, that'll be a little bit later down the road. Right now I sit here and I wait for people to call. And part of the reason why I wait for people to call, uh, it's, a, it's a sad state of affairs, ladies and gentlemen. But Skype has certain problems when you call using Skype, and that's the method that we're using for the most part, but nobody makes anything better than Skype, so we use it, right? And uh, usually what happens is the first person who calls us many times it gets fucked. I mean, something happens to his picture or he, he freezes or he can't get his camera to get working or whatever. Lately, it's been pretty good. We've had not that kind of problem, but it, what it does is it makes everybody hesitate to call the show. Now, how you do it, if you want to call it, is we are on Skype, okay? And you go to Skype.com and download their program. You give them your first name, your last name, and uh, you give them your last name, and you give them your, uh, your uh, um, um, email address and then a, a ID you want to use like ours. Our ID is, well, let's go over right now and check in with Rob Alfano, who just called, and uh, and what do you do? What do you do? You you you, uh, uh, you just install it, and then you give it a give it a ID, and then you can call our ID, which is Gabnet Live, or you can use the phone number. If you want the phone number, it's over there at gabnet.net. You can look at the phone number and call it as well. Also, the number that I remember is on the screen itself. See that number uh, below? That's uh, that happens to be. Uh, the uh, the number of uh, the phone number that you call if you want to use a telephone like your grandmother does. Uh, anyway, uh, we've just been joined by Phil Meyer, and I'm waiting for Rob's camera to kick in. Oh, let's ki- let's cross our fingers that it kicks in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's kicked Ooh, in, and now okay. we need for you to kick in here, uh, uh, Phil. Okay, uh, let me toggle it. Toggle it. Let's see. There we go. It's starting to whirl around, and there you are. 
See, everything went perfect tonight. All right. So people need not wait before they call so they won't be the, the first guy. Everything's perfect except my monitor is not staying in position. Well, 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 <laughs> well who cares? We, we don't know that. Yeah, well, it, the the camera keeps moving. Oh, the camera's in the in the in the well, screen. It's above it. Yeah. Well, you can have it any way you want it and adjust the camera. Yeah, Why do we have to have such a close up on you? Jeez. Yeah. It's well, like, I'll fix it. Huh? Uh, yeah. The um, I have a stand, but uh, it's uh, it needs to be tightened. It, it <laughs> I have a stand, but it needs to be tightened. Yeah. Anyway, we seem to be dropping some frames tonight, folks. If uh, I don't think anybody's noticing it, really, it's not sufficient enough that it's it's only about 0.8 percent of our signal is right now uh, uh, dropping frames. Yeah. Um, so this is a, all the problems with all this technology that I'm using now. You know, I just used to do this as a radio program, and now I'm doing the whole TV thing as well. And uh, while it works very nicely, you know. Um, uh, sometimes the signal goes out to Facebook uh, perfectly, and other times it doesn't. So, does it re uh, does it include uh, increase listenership or uh, viewership? What uh, the TV thing? Oh, shit, by 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 a whole ton. All right. Well, obviously that works. By a ton. Uh, but I could do this. You know where it actually is better. It has an actual better signal. Is on uh, on YouTube. But uh, not enough people go over there, you know, uh, it's, not it's, like they do with Facebook. Facebook announces to the world that you just went, you know. Yeah, it's convenient. It went live. All my 5,000 um, Facebook friends get a notification that I'm doing a live program. And yeah. so that call, it gets a lot of people to call. Patrick's uh, just been joining us. Patrick is, uh, how you feeling, Patrick? Let's, Good. yeah, yeah. Oh, you look at what are you doing? You're trying for a close up too. Is everybody trying? Oh, yeah. Everybody going to try for a close up tonight? How about me? I, I, oh, I can't get closer than that. I mean, I can, you know, I can do something, but I, I'm using the wide angle tonight, which I can, I can actually um, uh, change that if I want to, but I don't. La last couple of nights I went in closer, but the more you zoom, the la less. Um, uh, great picture you have, so you know. Hey, so I have a movie question. You, ha you have a advice. movie question. A movie question now from the man who used to run a game show here. Well, no, it's not a it's not a trivia question. It's not a trivia uh, question. No, I'm I'm going to go. We have a drive-in movie here, mm -hmm. and the weather's going to be gorgeous this weekend. And they show two movies for eight bucks a piece, eight bucks a person. Yeah. And uh, there are two screens. And the double feature on the first screen is Wonder Woman, the first show, and Baywatch, the second show. And on screen two, it's Pirates of the Caribbean on the first screen, or yeah. the first show, mm -hmm. and Guardians of the Galaxy 2 on the second. Oh, uh, wow. Second. Well, what you should do is buy a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> I just use the rearview mirror in my car. Yeah, just and just, you can watch it, both of them, all four of them at the same time. Okay, so which one would I do? Yeah, is that your question? Well, there's. Let's see. What the other one is? Wonder Woman and what's? Oh, and, and Baywatch. What's okay. Wonder Woman in, and in both Baywatch. cases, you have a great picture. Okay, because I hear Wonder Woman is getting very good reviews. Okay. And pirate and uh, what do you call it? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw a couple of weeks ago, and it's just—it's a lot of fun. It's just fun, okay. So that's your good thing. The deficit is you've got Baywatch on one of the screens, and you've got Pirates of the Caribbean on the other. Yeah. So my answer to all of that would be, uh, God, <laughs> it's like. Do you ever get yourself a, a, a like a, a package of Chuckles candy, and there was always one flavor you don't like, and that was the one you threw on the floor of the theater, you know? Or uh, with dots, I used to hold the the dots up to the screen so I could see what color they were, and I didn't like licorice, so I always throw the, threw those away. Uh, it, it's the same here. This is like a package of Chuckles. You know, you've got the one you like and the one you don't like. So yeah. what I'd say is either watch Wonder Woman and leave when Baywatch goes on, 
or watch Pirates of the, uh, rather, um, um, Guardians of the Galaxy and leave when Pirates comes on. Although Pirates... Pirates is first, so I could go late then. You could go well. Maybe everybody, maybe the place would be filled up. Because I mean, um, eight yeah. eight dollars. None of these are in three D, right? No, 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 no. Because all these, except for Baywatch, all these movies were released in three D. Right. You know, so no one. They can't do out. They can't do three D. What, what was that? That's got to be Phil playing. It's got to be sound Phil, effect. yeah. And he doesn't have much light on himself, so I can't, we can't, I can't even see him. And he's moving everything around. Quit monopolizing the show, Phil, and just give us a shot of you. Oh, you're you going to be like Mr. Baseball in the f baseball game where he gave the finger the mascot for the what? What, what team was it? What? What is that? Allen wrench. Allen wrench. Tightening oh, he's tightening oh, he's something. Tightening his monitor. Well, you couldn't do this before we went on the air, could you, Phil? You, you had to do it now. <laughs> anyway, um, I really want to see. Could, they could do. They could do 3D in the drive-in. Uh, they, according to the website, because that, that's one of the FAQs, they said they can't get enough light. You need a tremendous amount of oh, light to do I it. I see. Okay. They can't get enough light to do 3D in the outdoor. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. So I was thinking of going to go see Wonder Woman. Girlfriend doesn't necessarily want to see Wonder Woman, even though it's gotten pretty good reviews. So I'm going to go see it in 3D on Monday or Tuesday. Quite frankly, none of these movies really are my thing. You would like Guardians of the Galaxy. It's, yes, it's I would. Good I, fun. Uh, I like the first one. Yeah. So, so that's got me interested. But this you know one is I, not. What a, this, I love it, is I love going in the convertible and sitting outside at night and relaxing and hanging out and, and you know it's that's why it's a great night. It's you know yeah. eight bucks you get two movies. Yeah. Well, eight bucks for each of you, right? Are you gonna, are you going to go alone? No, no, no. Eight dollars for me and her. Uh, and separately and though, it's sixteen dollars total, right? Sixteen bucks for the for two movies. That's a pretty good deal for those oh, films because okay. they're not. It's not like they're giving you the. It's not like one of the pictures has already been out for months and months and months. Right. They're all films that got released. Well, Pirates is released. This was released last weekend, as was Baywatch, and this weekend they're releasing. Oh no. Uh, also, Guardians of the Galaxy has been out for a while. But Wonder Woman, you know, yeah. that's brand new. That's this week. And yeah. feel lucky because where you live, you can get in to see it because you're not a female. <laughs> because in a lot of these theaters, you know, they're, they've been running a, a special showings for women only. What? Yeah. I think it was in Dallas. They One of the theaters said uh, they're going to run it... Uh, uh, no men will be allowed into a p particular showing, like it was a preview showing or something like that. And none of the people who are men were allowed to work at the theater that night. It was what all, all women's big... staff. What's all that about? Wonder Woman. So all what? it's the first woman superhero. It was a TV show back in the seventies. Get over it. Well, it was also a great comic book. Actually, it was a great comic book, and I can't remember the name of the guy who created it, but he was into S&M. In fact, I have a book of his drawings of, like, bondage and domination that he did. And he was very hot into, into you know, powerful women who, uh, who, who, you know, and that's where Wonder Woman came from. I mean, she was the greatest lesbian of all time, for crying out loud, even though she fell in love with somebody, you know. Anyway, let's see. Well, I think you helped me make my decision. I think I'm going to do Pirates, and I don't care if I get there late. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, I just can't. Uh, those movies, my sister-in-law, we were in New York last weekend uh, for Memorial Day, and my sister-in-law said, oh, I'm dying to go see Pirates of the Caribbean. I was like, it's the last thing I want to see. But yet, uh, it's my only choice if I want to see Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, uh, uh, yes, uh, to Patrick. Why don't why don't you and Lovely make out during uh, pirates and then you know I mean what the hell? Cause that's it's the one that I would, idea. I would I would choose to go to that one and I would take my iPad or some shit and, and you know some earbuds and watch another movie while that thing was on. Yeah. You know, that's um, a good idea. You know, because I mean, Wonder Woman would be great, but 
you know, I, I think Guardian What? Wait, what, what's that? What is that noise? It's coming from you, Brian. Brian. Yeah. Brian, Br Brian we're getting a lot of noise from you. Is it not far? Uh, oh, can you hear me better now? No, you're, you're all distorted and everything else. How yeah. how far are you from home? About 20 minutes. Phone us when you get there, okay? Okay. Okay, because this phone right. thing just ain't working for you. Uh, anyway, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. Well, we were... We were uh, listening to Patrick say he would either bring an iPad or make out. Well, Pirates Pirate. of the Caribbean, I'm sure, is probably some kind of fun. You know, it's just it's been retreaded and retreaded. On the other hand, Guardians, I found, you know, having seen the first picture, I hold out no hope for the sequel, right? Uh, but it's more of the same, but just as funny and just as well done. And I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, I, you can't beat the raccoon. Come on, you know, as a as a funny character. Did you see any of these films, Patrick? No, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Not yet. Did you see the first the first Guardians? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I I thought it was, uh, and I'm not a big superhero movie guy. And what I liked about Guardian is I didn't need to know any background on any of the other. Captain America or any of the other stuff. I could just go see it and enjoy it. I hate so. it. I hate it when they do those Avengers pictures. I just hate them. Because what you've done is you've yeah. taken a bunch of fairly decent movies and made them into one bad one. Mm -hmm. You know? I mean, I, are we ever going to see... Um, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, oh, God. I'm out of it today. I didn't get enough sleep last night. Are we ever going to see the guy with his, you know, the fake heart? Uh, 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 Iron yeah. Man. Are we ever going to see Iron Man again by himself? Or are they just going to keep making these movies where it's like, even, even the last Captain America, which I, I like the first Captain America, I like the second Captain America. Third Captain America could have been called Avengers 3 because it was like a gangbang of superheroes. And I want to see Captain America. Yeah, it, it's like an ensemble cast. It's, what was it, uh, Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil? Yeah. What, that all of the uh, Hollywood folk, that, that's what they're doing with the Avengers. Where it's like all of the ensemble, all of the main characters. Yeah, yeah that, that's why Guardians won me over. I, I thought, I don't need any background. Yeah, well, even, even with, if, if nobody saw the first Guardians and they just went to see Guardians 2... They wouldn't have to know anything either. That's good. Except that all of a sudden, the big wooden thing, you know, uh, Groot, uh, is a little baby Groot now. Right. Done in a high-pitched sound by uh, Vin Diesel. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. Uh, but, and, and he becomes the hero, actually, of the piece. But it, it, it's a fun picture. It's just really fun. So, I, I think you can't go wrong with that. And I'm sure... I'm sure Pirates of the Caribbean, you know, you can see Johnny Depp. Finally, if he took that makeup off, he'd look the same way, you know. Maybe I'm hoping that there's a baseball game on and I could watch the baseball game on my iPhone during the during the uh, 7 o'clock start. Yeah. Actually, it's still light out at 7 o'clock. What, what, what happened? The to movie's going to start till 9. What happened to Phil? This is rude, Phil. He's still there. What are you trying to do? Why didn't you do this before we went on the air? Uh, it was fine before we went on the air, and then the monitor dropped down on my keyboard, and uh, it's a disaster. Let me let me get it. I can't find an Allen wrench that fits this goddamn thing. I'll be I, right back. I don't understand what kind of monitor it is. Most it's a thirty-inch Dell. Oh, you really need something that big. Well, uh, for editing photos, you know. But no, you uh, can edit photos on a much smaller. Uh, I, I know. Uh, I I got this. I should have gotten like a 24 uh, I mean, inch. Uh, I've been thinking about it, about buying a 34, but that's just for doing this show, so I can I can have more area to put stuff on the screen for me to because I've got you know I've got the switcher here and I've got a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Well, with with this, you know, you got um, uh, with Lightroom, you got 
panels on all sides and uh, things like that. But hey, I'll, I'll find the right the right wrench. <laughs> all right. It takes an Allen wrench that big. I, I nothing fits. I don't know what this is. I bought it from Amazon as one of their special uh, special deals, and nothing fits, and I can't find the wrench that came with it. Uh, I'll be right back. Uh, okay. Oh, boy. It's funny. Didn't we see him earlier? Didn't we have a picture of him? Yeah, but it was it kept moving. It, yeah. it did pop. Yeah. So we're, we're going to sit here all night with a blank screen of, uh, of, of Phil. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> there, there he is. Now we can see he's on the floor. If, if it, if this is all great radio for those people who are only listening to the audio of the show. Um, oh, I, I got news. Oh, okay. I've got a cataract. Oh, really? 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 Yeah. You didn't get a Studebaker instead? Well, <laughs> yeah, it, you know, but the uh, the deal went better on on the uh, cataract. Uh, and the cataract? That's <laughs> a that's a Japanese Cadillac. Yes. Yeah. Uh, no, I. That's very simple, though. Yeah, I went to the eye doctor today, and my vision hasn't changed. But he noticed that. It was uh, what looked like the start of a cataract. It's so what, it's, it's, and then he said to you the following statement. I'll bet you this is what he said to you. But let's wait till it gets ripe. Was that exactly what he, the term he used? Yep, that's exactly it. He said we got to wait until it gets uh, uh, ripe and then it gets uh, more condensed or whatever it is, whatever word he used then. So he said, I wouldn't worry about it right now. He said... Um, we'll take a look in a year and, yeah. you know. Does it, what happened was eventually I, I needed one because it was in the center of my eye or whatever. And it was just always blurry in the center of my eye, you know? So, um, and I have a love for 3d movies, as you know. So uh, I went to the, the, the doctor and he says, uh, yeah, you need a cataract surgery on that one. He said that one, the other one, he says, you got one starting in the other eye too, but it isn't ripe yet. Okay, so I went to he went went to the thing. It is the simplest operation. It takes about fifteen minutes. You wear a cup on your eye for one night. You kind of look like a retard for one night, and then the next morning you go in to see him again, and he takes a look at it and says it's just fine. Here, keep putting these drops in your eyes for the next week, and you do that and come back and see me in a week, and then he looks at it again. The most annoying part of it is going to see him. Uh, and uh, then a couple of years later, I did the other eye because it started getting ripe, as, as they put it. And uh, uh, I had the other eye done. And now, where I used to have to wear like uh, uh, 275, maybe 300 glasses, I'm now down to 175. May, actually, in some cases, I can like read the screens and everything without even any glasses at all. And it, and that isn't what it's meant to do, you know. That's LASIK. That's supposed to clear up your well, your uh, I think far away vision. Uh, but uh, uh, it did it did improve my my eyesight. So you know, nothing nothing wrong with it. Simple process. Uh, this guy was it was like cataracts or us. I went and he he had this this place he had it to do it at. And there must have been 20 of us in these chairs just waiting for him to, uh, okay, Mr. Schwarzman, you're next. And I go in, and they put some Novocaine stuff in your eyes, and then you see a little this and a little bit of that and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. About 15 minutes later, okay, you're good to go. Do you? So you, you're watching them do the surgery like you're looking up, yeah, and and you they're like they actually you actually see it happen. Well, yeah, because your eye has to be open so we can get to the to the the cataract to remove the one lens and to put in the new lens. And that's not like really uncomfortable to like to see. No, it? it's just that it, it, you can't feel anything because whenever they yeah, put this stuff yeah, in your no. eye, you, you probably had it happen when you've gone oh, to I the eye doctor. You don't feel a damn thing. So he's doing all the little cutting and everything. Then he removes the lens. And I can't remember when dark or just went really blurry. But then he does something else, and the next thing I know, I've got a lens in my eye, you know? And uh, they, they send you home with a little cup, 
So you won't hurt, I guess so you won't hurt yourself or whatever, put it out of position. And then um, they gave my mother these glasses. She looked like Ray Charles. These they and I was like, you're not going to really wear those because she was starting to wear them even after the. Well, they I'm didn't like, do both I of think them. You look they, like you're old. You know, I was like, come on, Ma, you're not going to wear those. They didn't do both of them at the same time, did they? No, they rarely do. They do that. No, but uh, uh, but they put a cup. It was a little cup, you know. And uh, uh, Kevin's got his fan on. I can tell. Sorry. Yeah, they're hot. <laughs> Yeah, I hate that kind of rig, constant noise because yeah, it, uh, it, uh, it disturbs us. Uh, turn on your camera, and then everybody can see the man with the beard. And you're going to come on, and you're not going to see Phil because he's out trying to find the right Allen wrench. For his... He's under the desk again. Yeah, he's under the desk again. And so did anybody hear Donald Trump's speech today? No, I, no, I heard a little, like, moments of it. And uh, that's all I needed to hear because, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, no, I, I need someone to answer a couple of questions. Well, I'll, I'll answer them for you having not heard the speech. I, I, look, I'm not a big Donald Trump fan, but I couldn't say I, was, I had a long drive back today. So I was listening to the speech while I was driving. Yeah. And I actually agree with a bunch of it. Like what? Was, well, for example, he's talking about this this deal that you know the the paris deal not being good for our country not being good for our industry and he went to say that it makes us close down all of our coal and yet company uh, countries like india and china can still run their coal are they part of the the accords why? are they part why, of the accords? why is that supposedly we're, we're about the, uh, 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 there, there are there were exceptions made based on the ability to close everything down in time. It couldn't that every every nation couldn't do it at once. Well, I don't yeah. know. I hey, had to agree here, with here, him. Here's where, he, like, here, minute, here, you know? here's where he's lying. Uh, I, we And we mentioned this last night. Uh, coal was a, and is, an archaic yes. way of doing business. Okay? Uh, and I think the countries that said that they would according to the Paris Accords, do away with coal. Didn't say they were going to do away with it tomorrow. They were going to do away with it within a certain time frame. You know, and so I think with India and, if, and places like China, China is converting right now because they've got to. If you've ever been in Beijing, I mean, you can't see your hand in front of your face sometimes. It's a so shithole. Bad. Yeah. Uh, and, and aren't they off the hook until 2030 or something, according to this Well, because, thing? because the job of trying to convert away from coal and to other uh, energies is so large. Uh, and, and believe it or not, uh, uh, China has decided to make it one of their major businesses, is alternative power. So that w while they're correcting their problem, they're also creating a whole industry and it, you know you want to take all those people who are coal miners and give them better jobs, we give get them a better lot of jobs. Solar panels from there. Well, forget about solar panels. A lot of other ways of doing this. Get them into the industries that are the alternative power because coal. Nobody today really wants to burn coal anymore. I don't think they're burning coal at Con Ed here in New York any longer. You know, um, so I mean. Uh, there are a lot of uh, it, there are a lot of places these coal miners could go. In, uh, besides sending them down into a place where they get black lung disease, there's a new uh, coal plant opening next month, I think. Where? He said it, and I'm I'm trying to remember. And in fact, he said that uh, he was asked to go for the opening. Uh, there's a new coal plant opening, a coal mine opening. Yeah. Uh, well, he talked about but, Ohio, Pittsburgh. He did, yes. else? He well, you know, the, today the mayor of Pittsburgh came out against what he did. Yeah. Well, because he, he came out and said, "I'm the president of." Uh, why did he say, "I'm re I represent the people of Pittsburgh, not Paris"? And so yeah. I, I had a no I, wait a minute, no, 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 no. But he came out against Trump getting out of the uh, the the Paris Accord. A lot so of people, did. a lot of people have. I mean, Exxon Mobil did, BP did. Yeah. Apple did. All these companies are coming out against it, and I wonder if they, I wonder if they're if they're familiar with it, the the actual agreement. Now, because what Trump did say was he's all about 
going back and renegotiating uh-huh. the deal. Yeah, that's yeah. more can that's every, more amicable, you know, and more you know beneficial for American mm-hmm. businesses. That, so well, then that's you, what had me going. You know, if, does, if, that if sound like does, that, does that sound like a good idea? Does that sound like a good idea to use? Go back and renegotiate it. Yeah. Well, here's a, a here's a headline. Here's a headline that just came through a while ago, about three hours ago. The Paris Agreement cannot be renegotiated. Germany, France, and Italy rebuff Trump's claim that he can get a better climate deal. Oh well. So there goes that theory. Well, just I I, I he really made it you sound know, good. I know what you mean, Rob. He made yeah. it sound good. He made it sound like he's looking out for us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but well, he's he's happy. not. He's if he was looking out for us, he wouldn't want to start burning coal again and and, and choking us to death, and yeah. and sending those poor miners down into those incredibly negative conditions in the coal mines, where yeah. black lung disease is the thing you eventually know you're going to die of if it isn't a collapse inside the mine. I mean, how many miners in history have been killed as a result of mining? Yeah. It was that kind of death was very common. Yep. You know, so to tell me that you're trying to help America by by reintroducing coal, uh, there isn't a business out there for coal. That's well, the, other the other thing, thing he that forgets. was brought up. The other thing that was brought up today is that this new coal mine is only going to be 70 jobs. Oh, wow. Well, he's certainly saving automated. American jobs, isn't he? There's was going to be report, 70 jobs. There was a report today that uh, 238,000 new jobs were created last month. But how many GMs now laying off a bunch? Ford is now laying off a bunch. And and so, where are those jobs? What are they doing? Being yeah, that's it, the thing. It, we're wearing, it wearing the red hat at McDonald's. It it didn't say, uh, but they're certainly not. Uh, in <clears throat> government. Uh, yeah, but but, but if I remember, under Obama, you had those numbers. Yeah, because he was hiring people uh, and giving them government jobs. No, no, no. Well, that's no, our military. Phil. No, no, Phil. The fact that's is our, that, our that I Phil. remember whenever they would give you the monthly jobs report, it, it was always at least in the mid 250,000s around in right. there. So what's so different about him just because he, he's president he's now? He's taking people off in the federal government. He's getting leaner and meaner, and these are private sector jobs. Uh, these are pri- no, but the private sector it includes, okay, includes all those people who are being paid less than they used to get paid with the jobs they got laid off from. It's, that's your new economy. No, no but you, you're trying to make excuses. You're trying, you trying were trying to make excuse. a big point it's that your economy. boy was a hero you, you farm, because he— You, 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 you want to farm— you, no, that he was a big hero because he created so many jobs last month, and you don't know what the fuck those jobs are and what jobs they lost they and had to take these for. So you're looking at the minutia. There's 238,000 people oh. that are working. Yes, Maybe but if they're working, if they, if they're working at minimum wage, yeah, you, uh, and you're you not, know. huh? <laughs> you're working at sub minimum wage right now. You well, paid I, no, it's a hobby. You know. <laughs> That's not the point, so, though, Phil. The, the point is, if you're going to announce jobs, you need to let people know what sectors. And I mean, I look. I'm sitting here telling you, have, yeah, I'm I, doing something that I'm doing something that you don't do, which is ever stick up for the other side. And I, I listened to Trump's speech today, and mm-hmm. I heard things that made me think. Because at first I was like, you know, this is ridiculous. How can we step away from this? But then the way he put it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I he's you. trying to look out for America's business interest in his, as well. And if he's looking to renegotiate, then I don't think it's that 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 he's, but, he's against. But, but they say the, these countries say it can't be renegotiated. It's well, I mean, that's, don't you think that's don't you think that some of that is rhetoric, too? Yeah, it's voluntary. Don't you think that some? Why can it be renegotiated? Why everything could be renegotiated? Nobody's locked no. in, according to the CNN pundits. My whole ride home today, they all said the exact same thing about this agreement. It's it's not something you really should worry about because you do or don't do what you want to do, meaning you're not locked into doing anything. You do what it is that you do. So if right, did you you heard the same thing? You're shaking your head. Uh, it's it's an agreement. Yeah, it's an agreement yeah. that. It, it, so if that's like the case, why work. can't it be renegotiated? They're just putting up a hard line because they don't like that America dropped out of it. Yeah. Well. So you see, Phil, I'm sticking up here because uh, you know you I, never I, do that. Yeah, you I, never you I, never do I, do I, that. I, that's why you. Know, that's why Phil has no credibility. I, I always knew you were a mensch, Rob. 
Yeah. yeah, no, no, but no, that's why Phil has no credibility and why Patrick does. <clears throat> you know. I support Trump and he doesn't. No, that's, because you support him no matter what. You can't blindly support anybody. I'm not blindly supporting well, him. He's it, doing it, everything it, I want done. You know, yeah, when there's we, some really I, I stupid to pull out, things, and he and he does. He's really inconsistent. Now they're gonna. They're now again. AJ, what's his name? The Sessions, right? Yeah. And they're they're they're, they're saying that again. That there there's there's a hit, a headline today saying that uh, that they're they're gonna have to uh, they're gonna check him for what is it? Uh, possible I, perjury. Good. Because he had another another meeting with a Russian that he didn't Look, mention. If these guys are dirty. Hang him, all right? If they're he's dirty, fixed. hang him. Okay, Trump how fixed. about Trump if he's dirty? If he's dirty, you hang him too. Okay, well, we'll get ready. I'm I'm making the noose up right now. <laughs> <laughs> You're also making up the news. But, uh, you know, if these guys are bad news, then they got to go. It, you well, know, then, what, then, but then what are we saying about Mr. Uh, Art of the Deal, that he doesn't even know how to hire the right yeah. people? Hey, you know what? Everybody makes mistakes. Wait a minute. No, every no. Wait a minute. It, it, the, the, these are not. This is not a mistake here and a mistake there. This is a whole fistful, two fistfuls of mistakes. So he's got mistakes. Wait. And and what administration hasn't changed people up after? Not this uh, early. Not well, this early. And not from perjury and from ties to a, a an unfriendly government. Uh, and and how much of that is Russian plant news? In order to get us to be having these kind of uh, divisive conversations. Oh, I see. Everything is either planted or. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't buy that. I don't. I don't. Sound like Hillary it. yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and and that was a little sour grapes too. What she said. Yeah. yeah. I think the whole thing's sour grapes. What what whole thing is sour grapes? Well, all all of this, mm -hmm. you know, from last night. Uh, you know, I've seen tweets, I've seen uh, Facebook posts, I've seen R Renee saying that she wants him impeached and, any, and anything. Keep keep checking. Look, look, look. Have look, a witch look. hunt. You know, even I will. Uh, and I saw you raise your hand, Jeff. So we'll go to you in a second. That's all right. The, no, the thing is that last night. I mean, you want to talk about me uh, again? being a little bit Fair. fairer than you are, Phil, I said that I felt that the idea of impeachment was uh, was not a good one. Well, I you know, and that, uh, that, that I don't think there's any way you're going to be able to impeach him. you got to catch him with his hand in the Obstruction cookie jar. Obstruction of justice. Obstruction right. of justice. Hey. And he, there are a lot of people under him who will have to go first before you ever yeah, get but, to the big guy. But he and had the conversation. Sure. He had the conversation with Comey. Comey's going to we'll testify see. next week. Hey, if, we'll see if next Comey week. comes out and says that he put pressure on him to drop the investigation, that's going to be that's obstruction, obstruction of justice. That's, well, obstruction that's impeachable. Of justice. Today's tweet was uh, Comey, uh, tell the truth, uh, because uh, something about tapes. Uh, yeah, that, he's got tapes, right. Yeah, well, he's claiming he, he may he's have He's claiming tapes. he may he have, tapes. have tapes. But he's saying <laughs> yeah. he may. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, uh, well, uh, he hasn't invoked executive privilege trying to get Comey not to testify. I hope he doesn't. Well, wait a minute. You but, can't do an executive. Uh, well, they are saying decree. that he could, he but uh, because he's already tweeted about some of this stuff, he may not be able to invoke it. Because he's been talking too much. Right. About exactly. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, yes, Jeff. Well. While while I'm thinking and listening to all of this, yeah, I gotta say, Phil, there's a good word that I lot that I learned in college. It was called syncophant. Yeah, I think I think you really you need an award for that. The no, biggest uh, well, syncophant. All I say is, don't convict until he's convicted. You know, you, you, you guys want to want to hang him. You're making the noose. Uh, if the guy is wrong, then I say put him out with the trash. You know, right now the things. But he's you'll doing be the last one to admit he's wrong. It's not true. No, it is true. You make excuses for every piece of bad behavior this guy does. You think it's bad behavior? He's doing what I want. Paris peace accord. Uh, Paris accords. Uh, climate accords. Well, wait, 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 wait a minute. If, we, if we're saying that the Paris accords are just an agreement, what, what? How does it hurt to keep? being part of it and saying yes this is you a this is a this is no well, you, let me finish phil uh, 
Well, yes. How does it hurt? Yeah, forget it. I forgot what I was going to say now. All right. Uh, you want me to remind you? Yeah, sure, please. Okay. H how does it hurt to pull out of the uh, to pull out of this agreement? No, I said how would it this hurt to no how it, how would it hurt to stay in it? Uh, because because uh, from what I understand, from what you understand, was reported on CBS, yeah, uh, that uh, we have much higher restrictions than other countries, and and Rob is uh, in agreement with that, and also. And, and there's millions. I can't of believe they don't have higher restrictions in China, who has a massive problem. They do, but now China, because America, U.S. is pulled out, mm -hmm. China has said that they will increase their restrictions and come to the party. So maybe this uh, little move is going to be a very positive one. Well, see, the, my concern there, Phil, is that we lose our place. At, at the leadership role, the world leadership role. Hold, hold, on, a second. hold, on, hold on a second, guys. Somebody's trying to call me, and I, they can't get through. And I don't know what their problem is. Who is this? Who Who's calling? Oh, oh this is Dan. It's me. D Dan, you get, you're calling right. us wrong somehow, and I'm not, able to, wrong. I'm not able to answer the call, and all the other people are on hold right now. I don't oh, know. I'm sorry. I, I don't know I'm what sorry. I can do about you, is, except maybe call you back. But this is not well, this no, is not I'll working. Just say, I'll just say this because everybody's talking about. Well, they can't. Like, well, they can't. They can't. They can't, he, they can't hear you, and it doesn't contribute to the show this way. Okay. Right, uh, okay. Okay. Bye bye. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, add to group. Let me see if that'll do it. Uh, let me see here. Resume call. Hello. Is everybody there? Yep. Is everybody there? That was that was Dan trying to call, and we can't figure out why. Here, I'll try to add him to the group and see what happens, if anything. Uh, it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Okay. Well, I tried. Now, Brian, somehow we have lost. Uh, but um, you know, I, I I don't know. He was ringing, and I tried to put him on the on the on the group, and it wasn't working. Anyway, <coughs> back to the Paris Accord. Uh, I, you know, we uh, may have had restrictions put on us, but as, as somebody seems to have noted, that none of this is binding. It's just kind of an agreement. And there's a lot of states that are just going to stick, stay the course, like us here in California. Yeah. Old Goofy Brown got on today and said he was staying the course. And, and I know being in the transportation business, the uh, emissions controls that are going on to trucks these days are yeah. insane. Onerous. Uh, just well, crazy. Well, onerous, but what, what, is, what, is, the, uh, what is the alternative? Uh, it, the alternative it, is if I, you're socially conscious, then uh, monitor yourself. Yeah, that's uh, kind of what I'm seeing. Yeah. You know something? It's kind of nice that you believe that, Phil, but you honestly believe the business people. And now, Jeff, I get, I get Brian back. But I lose Jeff. I, I don't get this tonight. I, uh, I see him. Well, he's going to call back now. Yeah, it, 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 he's ghosted out there for a second. But anyway, here we go. Here comes, here comes Jeff. Are you back with us, Jeff? <coughs> Jeff? Can you hear I us, see. Jeff? He's probably connecting. Oh, here we go. He, and he, we'll be able to see him. Can you hear us, Jeff? I Jeff, see him. can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Volume uh, up, Jeff. Some, uh, huh? Okay, well, anyway, he'll figure it out. First, we have monitors Hi, that are falling, and uh, Brian, you're there. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Turn on your camera, and then we'll be able to see you. I'm you, saying just still frames of moving at like two frames a second or some shit. Oh boy. Everybody's moving at two frames a second, so Well, we don't have any problems here. So you know, um who knows? We lost Jeff again. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, Skype is taking a shit on us and having an epileptic fit. Yeah. yeah. It's climate it's climate change. Yeah. Um, the, the fact of the matter is, Phil, is that you believe that we leave it to business and they'll do the right thing. Yeah, sure. No, how, many, no. how many here actually believe that? Hell no. 
Do you think Apple or Microsoft or some of these uh, businesses are going to start polluting now that the uh, climate uh, conference has well, been changed? to begin with, let me just say I mean, that, that, that the companies what like... What do you my, think, well, Phil? Me, do you think they will? Well, wait, wait, wait. Let me, let me, let me, ones won't. Let me answer that question. Brian, Close. turn up, turn on your camera so we can see you talk. Uh, 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 will they? Uh, Apple doesn't pollute, and neither does Microsoft, because their industries aren't... Uh, uh, aren't polluting industries. And they're not making uh, things in China that pollute? Uh, th that's up to that's China up to as to what their standards are. Right. Yeah. And now China says that they'll increase their standards. Uh, uh, and, and I think that that's what Trump wants. He just wants a more even playing ground. And uh, he the said even he's playing going to ground. To begin with, we don't make computers here anymore. We don't know how to make computers anymore. That's because uh, if we made computers here, uh, uh, we would be closed down by the. Well, you uh, do EPA. realize that Apple does make computers here, don't you? Yeah. They it, do they? It, what do they do? Assemble them? What do they make here? The, 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 well, to begin with, I think the, the new Mac Pro, all of them are being made in Texas, I believe. Well, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, they've been doing well, fantastic. They've been doing it for years now. Yeah, well, Texas uh, allows uh, a little bit more leeway than a uh, than a state like California. Yeah, you know, when it and comes Microsoft to basically, even though they have a lot of hardware, is a software based company. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, and they're not using CDs anymore, so those uh, aren't getting into the environment, but. Uh, and people in this country, we're making buildings with lead credits. We're, we're doing a lot of stuff for green. Uh, and, and there are. And you don't believe in green. Oh, yeah, I sure do. Oh, okay. Well, then what are you complaining about? No, I'm you saying should, that we, we do it because it benefits us. If you build yeah. a building today and, and you, you get a lot of lead credits, yeah. uh, what those credits do, uh, because you've used certain kinds of materials in the buildings yeah. that, uh, that, are, uh, uh, that are good for the environment, and, so, uh, and, and you get benefits yeah, from when that. I want environmentalist, I'm, I'm, when I want an environmentalist, I'll come to you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, Jeff, are you so, there? Yep, I'm right on. And you can hear me? Turn your camera on. Everything's working pretty good. Yeah, but turn your camera on. Or turn, okay. Turn it off and then turn it back on again. You should, yeah, we should see you. And how about oh, you, now. Brian? What's wrong with your camera? Again, everything's moving at two frames a second. Let me uh, close out Skype and then log back in again, see uh, if that doesn't uh, fix the problem. Uh, okay. Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes. Um, a, boy, I hate the nights when we... I love the nights when we don't have technical problems and all the yelling and screaming can go on unabated. <laughs> what do you think about all this, Patrick? You've been a little bit quiet about it. I I came up with a term for myself. Um, Marjorie had a thread that she started yesterday on climate change, mm -hmm. and um, Mar I'm not a Marjorie climate being my wife, folks. Yes, I'm not a climate change believer um, or, or a global warming believer. I do believe in climate change in that it's a cyclical thing and. The thing that I go back to is all of the scientists nowadays are banging the drum that we're, we're heating the planet up, where in 1975, they were banging the same drum saying we we're heading into an ice age. So I believe that it's... Oh, you, know you, can be, you know you can be heading into both at the same time because uh, heat inversion can cause an ice age. Well, here, here's the deal. So I came up with a term... Um, earlier this evening after um, getting into it, well, not really getting into it, but discussing it on that thread with a few people. Mm -hmm. I am a climate change agnostic. Yeah. So I think that's a good term for me that I believe there's something, but I'm not willing to put my eggs in either side because I don't think the scientists honestly know what the fuck is really going on anyway because again in 1975 they were convinced we were going into an ice age and you know i got somebody had said well technology had changed well right and you know what the technology changed so that in 1975 they had a different reading than they did the previous whatever 30 years or, or whatever they were marking so i don't think that there's any real um definitive thing that's going on i don't believe humans are responsible for it 
uh, are they accelerating it? I don't know. That's where the agnostic part comes in. Uh, I haven't seen, I haven't been convinced of it. Okay. And, and I think you may remember, Alec, when you still had the television show, um, when you first started this network. Yeah. Uh, Charlie Wallace brought on a friend of his who was a scientist. Yeah. And she was trying to, I'll say, convince me, but she was, you know, discussing it. And even with what she had given, nothing convinces me that we're really heading into some global warming thing yeah. any more than we were heading into an ice age 42 years ago. Well, uh, I believe that we are um, uh, going into a case of global warming for whatever reason, okay? But I do think that it's bad enough that we are seeing some rather disastrous results, uh, especially in the Arctic, uh, and uh, in, the in the diminishing uh, life of polar bears and a lot of other things. I mean, we're seeing stuff going on. And as a result of the ice melting, the um, uh, uh, oceans are rising, and the only benefit to that is that in a little while, Miami mm -hmm. will be underwater and I'd be very happy. Okay? <laughs> so, um, yes, Patrick. Find the polar bears. I, I know I've heard some their penises people, are smaller now. I don't know who goes around measuring them, but their penises are smaller. Yeah, I, I had heard that, and I, I've heard people uh, talking about how they're worried about them. And here's my thought, and this goes to the scientific area that people should be looking at. If the ice is melting and mm. the polar bears have less landmass to live on mm -hmm. they're either going to evolve and adapt or they're going to die i mean that's science that's just the well reality. evolution however doesn't happen overnight that's Absolutely. the problem and Absolutely. and Absolutely. i don't know how fast they're going to be able to adapt to that they'll uh, learn how to swim pretty quickly if they need well they to. know how to swim but you well, know they can't women they, they, they you know they're not they're not aquatic they're animals the dirt. you know uh, the no, they, the they've been talking about climate change for years. They used to say we're going to get locusts. The crops are going to uh, the crops are going to die. Uh, the sky is falling. I never well, heard locusts. any. I never heard any of that. Yeah, well, in the in the Bible they talked about uh, well, locusts. Well, 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 yeah. Well, the Bible, the Bible. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, they were climate changers too. Now you're quoting the Bible. I see. B u y b u l l. Well, if it's the Bible, it must be true. So it's going to oh, happen. Absolutely. Well, you know, at least they were talking about. You said it, you hadn't heard them talking about locusts. Yeah. Or, now, now, now you're going to now you're going to or, or drought or famine or any of these kinds of things and we didn't even have cars back then so you know the, the only you know the we didn't produce anything and and even in the industrial age we started producing yeah, stuff Phil, I, I, I love you dearly but you're such a moron well you're not listening I, huh i'm listening i'm listening it's drivel it's, it may as well be poop coming out of your mouth yeah, well what i'm telling you is is that you've had a bunch of naysayers that have been saying this stuff for thousands of years and uh, this is just the new set of the new locusts mm -hmm. invasion. Let me let me let me inform you of something. And I think this is. By the way, uh, Brian, can you see us now? Okay. Yes. Can you see me? No, because you haven't turned on your camera. I, I did it once, twice to uh, do it again. There you go. There you go. There you are. Okay. Now let me let me inform you of something, Phil. Uh, the prognosticators can talk all they want to, but we did at one time, you know, have an ice age. Yeah. And everything on the planet was totally destroyed during, it'll happen again. during that ice age. And the reason why ice ages happen is no mm. matter what you want to do, no matter how much you want to drive your car or run your factories on coal or not sign on to accords or whatever, whatever it happens to be, we just lost Patrick. Um, no, he put up his picture. No, uh, no, he. Probably, I can see he, here he's actually offline. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Anyway, um, no matter what you want to say, this planet is going to survive, even if it has to kill you off to do it. And it will. And it will. Uh, because what, what the Ice Age does is it simply encapsulates the entire planet and then it cleans off the whole, the whole strata of, of, uh, 
of of waste and dirt it and everything takes, else. It cleans itself. It's self cleaning. It's like a it's like a uh, natural Roomba. Okay? Alex, how long does it take to have an ice age or an enema or induced vomiting? An ice age can come along fairly rapidly. How, five million years. Well, you see, of- before it happened in a very natural manner. Uh, I think did it happen after the meteor hit the Earth, or did it happen before? I think it happened. A- a- after the media, a meteor hit the Earth. I've believed for years that the planet is it, in and of itself a conscious living being. I mean, I'm an atheist. I don't believe I, in no, I, I I would, God, I would, but I, I do I, believe I, that. That is, a, uh, that is not a bad theory, okay? Uh, and you know, what you're just describing, I've, 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 I've uh, used the words, yeah. you know, but we didn't, flushing it, it, oneself. We, okay. uh, turn on your camera, Patrick. Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, turn it on. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, um, the um, uh, uh, we didn't have cars back then. We didn't have fossil fuels burning. Uh, the only fossil fuels we had were the dinosaurs who were making them. Okay, and and uh, so the the set of rules is different now. But the Earth, no matter what we do to it, no matter how much we try to destroy it, will not let us destroy it. It will survive, even if it has to do away with you. Okay? Now, I know you're not going to be here when that happens. None of us are going to be here when that happens. Mankind won't be here but when But I happens. think that we are stewards of this planet. We have been entrusted with it, and we should treat it well. Well, we're not going to be here because we're going to blow ourselves up. You know, uh, so it, it's uh, Phil. It, you, you know, you never you answer. You never. You question. never answer a question directly. You take it oh. over into some sci-fi speculation oh, that we're going to destroy each other before any of that happens. So, the what does it matter whether we ruin the Earth? Alex, by the time I said something very important and right. you didn't respond to it, and you didn't, you didn't respond to it. I oh, said, I'm responding. You won't let me. I no, you won't respond. I told you before. By the time we have another ice age, that's not what I was saying. You give mankind that's not what I was. That's not. That's that not. That's, 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 that's not what I was talking about, Phil. At all. You weren't listening. Of course, I was listening. No. You, what did I? What did I say then? Tell me. You kept saying I wasn't listening, but no, the, no. What? Uh, what? What was I saying that you? You were it, saying that the earlier ice age wipes. No, everything. I didn't say that. That was way before what I said. What I said was, we are stewards of this planet, and it is our job to take good care of it. Okay? This is true, although uh, geology moves very, Uh, very slowly. Here we go. Off, veering us into the ditch again. It is our job to take... Be here, good stewards. Here we go. Let's let's, let's all let's all let uh, Phil uh, drive it right into the it'll ditch. Take care you know? of us. Okay, uh, go ahead. Uh, I'm I'm still trying to find out what size Allen wrench this stupid monitor yeah, needs. Yeah, I wish you'd been spending most of the time doing it. Uh, uh, I, anyway, <laughs> hey, um, Alex. Yeah. Break, breaking news. Yeah. Trump Trump turns to the Supreme Court to move forward with the travel ban. Uh oh. Let me see here. Yes. Let's see here. Yes. Uh, uh, on the travel ban, Trump uh, turns to the Supreme Court and attempt to move forward. I don't think he's going to get an okay there. I don't either. I, even with his, uh, you know, packing the Supreme Court, I think he's going to be very surprised at the way his his new hire is going to handle this. Well, he really wants to jerk that cock, huh? Come on, he's got it out and he's trying to shoot that love. He, come on, come on, Supreme Court, take the love, take yeah, the love, fuck yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. I hope you get black. I think he's going to be very surprised when the Supreme when the Supreme Court says that you cannot use religion as a basis to keep somebody out of the country. I I can't see the Supreme Court voting any other way. And when he gets slapped like a like the little uh, whore he is by his pimp, yeah. uh, I I think that he's gonna he he's going to be in for a bad day. I mean, that's when he's going to lose all of his credibility. I hope he fucking has an aneurysm right there on the screen. I'd so fucking love to see that. Well, you know, I mean, I often said that if, you know, if, they often said if you took somebody you didn't like, put him in the middle of a football field, and then everybody wished him dead, he would die. Uh, I've never heard so, that so, Yeah, it, it, it's just a theory. But, also, they have, but like, I'm, all th- the I'm thinking maybe we, maybe we should have a day. We, we should have a fire. day of prayer in the United States that he gets an aneurysm and dies. But on the other side, and, of and it, if we could get like 10 million of us to do that, he just might get an aneurysm and die. 
And I'm no, on the, by the way, I hear the knock on the door from the Secret Service. Excuse I me, I have to go answer. Talk to God, talk to the devil. Maybe he'll make a deal. Did yeah. you guys talk about Kathy Griffin last night? You know, we didn't really get into it. We just you know, I, I mean, up. what do you think of that? I, I think that's a horrible thing. Look, well, I, look, Donald look, Trump. look, in, 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 it's in bad taste, but then yeah. again, it was against Trump, and who am I to say that's in bad taste? But, I just said just we should it. all wish him dead. I you think know. It, makes, it makes the other side look bad when you do stuff well like to begin with she isn't the other side she's basically uh, the group she's representing are cunts and uh, uh I, I talked about this with uh, with uh, uh, uh stephen pearl earlier on in the show in the segment that nobody listens to uh and uh we uh um uh, I was saying that I don't like her. I know her. I, I, I've met up with her. She is a cunt. She is a terrible person. I'm not about ready to defend on anything. But I will defend her on this, in that she is an alleged comedian. I say alleged because she's never made me laugh a day in my life. But she's an alleged comedian. And therefore, by virtue of that, she should be given a little bit of a, a, you know, it's satire, it's social satire. You may not find it in good taste, but they didn't find Lenny Bruce in good taste. They don't find a lot of people who try to, you know, uh, bend well, the rules. She got all those photos of people, you know, celebrating an, uh, Obama's inauguration the first time with those pictures of him being, you know, hung by a noose yeah, and I hanging mean, their Obama. By the way, Obama. Scott, Scott's with us. Turn on your camera, Scott. It's not on? No. No, all we see is... I lost respect for Kathy Griffin when she apologized for having done You know, I would, I would, not I, have I would say I that said. I thought less of her when she apologized. Not uh, only do I embrace... Not only do I, do, I, do I not apologize, I'm going to hang... You, we're using both head, hands to Trump <laughs> mock heads. Yeah, but what, what, she luck. shouldn't have apologized. So I think it was wrong of CNN... Ahead of time, I see your hand, Patrick. So we'll get to you next. Uh, I, 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 the thing I'm mad at is CNN for letting her go this early in the game. Okay, because you know by New Year's when they do that show, nobody watches with Anderson Cooper trying to bring in the New Year's. He's being nudged out by Ryan Seacrest. Um, uh, everybody will have forgotten this. Nobody will have said why they bring Kathy Griffin back. You know, this is a, this is a, a a momentary glitch here, and I think that as a comedian, she has the right to do that, and I'm not, I, I I defend her right to do it. I don't defend the bad taste. I could say it was in terribly bad taste, but between you and me, it didn't even hit me as bad anything that was in bad taste. It was a badly made image of of Trump. It was they put they put some Cairo syrup on it so it looked like the blood was dripping. And it, it really, it didn't really, where, where's Phil going now? Is he going after the bathroom? What is this? Um, but, you know, I, I, you know, if you want to say it's in bad taste, yeah, I'll agree it's in bad taste. Sure. But, but a lot of comedy is in bad taste. And uh, why? You know, I think TV CNN had to fire taste. her. Why did they have to fire her? Because, because CNN is perceived as Trump, as anti-Trump. So by letting that happen, you know, she works for CNN. She gets paid by CNN once a year, think, once a year. Well, that's fine. Either. So they, they come out saying, look, you know, we may not agree with a man's policies or whatever, but we're not going to condone that kind of messaging. And it's uh, not like on New Year's she's going to have a head of Donald Trump. No, hanging I, I understand there, that. Know. But they're making yeah. a statement, I think. Yeah. And I think well, a lot Patrick, of it is Patrick's had his hand up for a while here. And I don't want him. You know, he's lost. Uh, feeling to a lot of his body. I don't want to go out of his hands. <laughs> yes, Patrick. Um, I mean, my take on that whole thing is it it's free speech. Um, I don't have a problem with her doing it. Uh, free speech is not without consequence, which is reaction. Um, I think the blowback that she's gotten from a lot of the public is well-deserved yeah. because I do think it was done in bad taste, but you know, it's her career. She can do what she wants with it. And as far as CNN goes, when I heard that CNN, quote, parted ways 
I had to really sit and think what the fuck she ever did for CNN. <laughs> exactly. Right, Alec, it's only New Year. Then I would think to myself, nobody's going to remember this fucker. That's exactly the point. That's exactly the point. They, they jumped the gun too early. Here's what I would have done if I were CNN. I would have just waited till we got close to New Year and say we decided not to hire Kathy Griffin this year. And they wouldn't even have had to say why. Nobody would give a shit. Nobody would give a shit. Nobody gave a <laughs> shit when they hired her. Yeah. I, I did write that Anderson Cooper came out and said something, which I think was fine. Because again, this is a colleague of hers. Well, it's it 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 uh, the uh, the mud gets slung on him if he doesn't. Right. You know. Exactly. So but, it was good that way, but I think that's as far as it needed to go. Because again, I, I couldn't even remember what the fuck she did with. For CNN. people who don't know exactly what went on, Kathy Griffin took a photo session with some avant-garde photographer who had her holding a likeness of Trump by his hair. OK, with blood dripping as though it was a decapitated head. OK, and that's what it was. Now, quite frankly, you could say that was in bad taste. But um, the fact of the matter is that, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Brian put it perfectly when Obama was elected president. There were people going around hanging Obama in effigy. And how is that any different or in bad taste than what she <clears throat> did, except that it was just a little more graphic? You know, Jeff. I, I just think it's it's graphic as far as CNN and too much for them. And they're allowed to make that decision. But they, were, they weren't making that decision out of any, uh, what can we call it, uh, just absolute revulsion over what she did. They did it for financial no. purposes. Right. You know? I agree. I agree. They come out, you know, they're coming out because they are very anti-Trump. I mean, it's obvious they're anti-Trump. Well, no, they, they became anti-Trump because Trump became anti-CNN. And, well, yeah, it's true. And so every time they opened their mouth, he was in there going, oh, the lying fake news, press, CNN, blah, blah, blah. So finally they just said, if we're going to get this from him, we may as well deserve it. Yeah. You know. You think maybe that, uh, you huh? think maybe that they went so quickly to do that that they were just trying to keep the pressure on Fox with all the shit going on over there. Well, Fox has got enough problems already. Well, that's what but I mean. You, you know who, it, who, if it's diverted to CNN, you, they could just get rid of that you, right away. You know who the real assholes are is NBC because they're hiring all the all the people who leaves Fox. <laughs> you know, they got Megyn Kelly and they've got, uh, what's her name, Gre Greta Van Susteren. Like that, how, how she even has a TV show with that face is beyond me. <laughs> You know, I turn her on for a second and I can't, the face just, I, my yeah. God, you know, I mean, I would rather see like a picture of the Grim Reaper than her, you know? You can only turn it on for a second anyway, so. Yeah. But anyway, as you were, as you, uh, uh, who had their hand up? Somebody had their hand up. I think I, Jeff had his hand up, didn't you, Jeff? No, I'm done. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, Brian. Well, first of all, you could see if your picture's adjusted and clear when Greta Van Susteren comes on the uh, airways by uh, how, by, by, by uh, what, whether or not you have dry heaves or wet heaves. Yeah. When you have a wet heave, you know you have the best no. picture. No. Oh, the quality. last thing I'm Teeth trying. The last thing I'm trying to do with get Greta Van Susteren on the screen is jerk off. <laughs> I, I, in, yeah. fact, in fact, in fact, in fact, uh, if I were running the porno industry and I were hiring guys to be in porno films, what I would do is I would say, okay, I'm going to put a picture on this TV set, and if you can jerk off to it, you're hired. You know? <laughs> and then I would show them a picture of Greta Van Susteren and see if they could jerk off to it. Or super and if they her. could, I'm going, you're hired. Superimpose yeah. her face on Ann Coulter's body. Yeah, uh, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, you know, as I earlier before, you said in for a penny, in for a pound, you know, with CNN, um, you know, my, uh, the way I phrase it is in for a penny, in for a dollar. So you better believe I'm going to get my goddamn remaining 99 cents worth. Where's Phil been? You know, Phil and his fixing his goddamn TV thing tonight is just getting to be. He's got his tools now. Huh? What, what did you say, Phil? I can't even, we can't even hear you. Oh, I finally got the right size. Really? That isn't what That's your girlfriend what said. said. Okay. Yeah. I beat yeah. you to it. Beat you to it, Brian. <laughs> beat you to it. Yeah. <laughs> No, but, you know, 
Uh, my feeling is that I will defend a comic on just about anything they do, primarily because I, that's their job, you know. And uh, in the case of Kathy Griffin, she's not a very talented comic. Uh, finding things that are funny doesn't come well by her. And so this was a clumsy attempt at trying to be funny. And, and you can't, uh, you can't uh, you know, you can't argue it. Uh, if this were a politician who did it, you know, if Al Franken said, look, I got the head of, you know, I'd say, okay, now that, that's bad taste, you know. But when a comic does it, you can't go bad taste. It's just badly done comedy. And I'm thinking, what's a bad taste, too? The prudes that, uh, you know, ruffle, get their feathers ruffled, yeah. and all at the same time are likely guilty of doing the but, same thing themselves. Only difference is they're not being yeah. recorded 24-7 in front of a camera. Yeah. By the way, we're one away from a full house tonight. Uh, hey. hello, hello, Renee. Turn on your camera so we can see wonderful Hawaii. I've been listening to you guys for a while. Yeah. Mm -mm. I don't want to talk about climate the climate accord thing because it there's sorry, what Phil has, Phil has some basis for not wanting to be there and i only sort of agree with it but i don't want to talk about it number two greta van susteren that's the new improved face and you still can't jerk off to it it's bad yeah, no, <laughs> i know they said she got a she got a yeah. face job and i'm going where where'd she go you know like uh, you know, where'd she go to toys r us to get that face i mean what walmart walmart yeah boy and and so i don't know if it really what, is it really that much better than her old face? Well, she she didn't get that new face recently. She got that new face a couple of years ago. Yeah, oh, but yes. I don't... At least 10 years ago. It, 10? Really? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Still Did anybody ever see Family Guy? Apparently, yeah. no word. There, no. Was a, there was an episode of Family Guy where they made fun of that Greta Van Susteren's look where Glenn Quagmire, you know, the pervert, he's flying in it because he flies planes. Yeah. Ray Murray may have seen the episode, and he's flying through, what is it? This is like 10 or so years ago, but he's flying through a, a, a billboard of uh, uh, The Simple Life with the Par with Paris Hilton. And then yeah. he goes, giggity, boom, flies through it. Then he flies to another picture of like Jessica Simpson, giggity, boom. <laughs> he's flying through their vaginas, really. But, yeah. you, you know, where their vaginas would be. And yeah. then he gets the threat of ancestry and he goes, oh, oh. And he flies over the billboard. <laughs> he finds a picture of Jack Daniels. He flies through that. Boom, and he goes back to Greta Van Susteren and says, all right. Flies to her pussy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and speaking of, uh, for, uh, one more statement. Yeah. Trump's yeah. such a douchebag that there's only a couple or maybe a handful of of tech leaders that were on his side, and so is Bezos is. But today, Elon Musk said, fuck you. I told you. You go out of it. I'm not talking to you. It's your stank. And Elon Musk left the committee. So he probably has like one, maybe two people that are tech people that are on any kind of committee with him at all. Because they don't want anything to do with him. They, well, they, they, yeah, they don't want the stink to come off on them. Yeah. So Elon Musk said, screw it. I, I don't want anything to do with you. I'm not on your committee anymore. I'm out. Yeah. You know? yeah. And he told him in advance, he said, if you if you back out of this thing, if the Paris Agreement, then I am not going to be on this committee anymore. And as soon as his Trump stuff came across Twitter, Elon Musk, Musk stuff came across Twitter. And it was great. Yeah. There could be more, too. Yeah, but he doesn't have that many in the Valley. In the first place. Well, that's true. I mean, there's probably what maybe ten. But okay, so at, uh, the big green person from Oracle. <clears throat> then <laughs> we know the Salesforce isn't his. We on his team. Um, so he probably really only has a couple of Valley people, and to lose one of them is pretty sad. But. Elon Musk isn't just a Valley person. Elon Musk is one of the brightest brains we currently have on this planet. Yep, and yep. and he left Trump. Well, uh, uh, Elon, well, Elon Musk is, uh, yeah, he's pretty bright. I mean, I think he also has a conscience, too. The, what's his name from uh, Oracle? He's still on Nelson. the... Uh, Ellison, is he still on the uh, panel? 
or something. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure he's still up there. Yeah. Well, he's an asshole anyway. Bezos and 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 um, Oracle. So mm -hmm. Ellison. Not Bezos, of course. You know, yeah. when these guys when these guys pull out, Assholes. what it does is it uh, limits their ability to add input to uh, to the conversation. Uh, no, see, you know, they, I think they, that's they, true. Yeah, they they um, you know they hoist themselves by their own petard. What they what they're doing is that they're uh, they're they're cutting off their nose to spite well, their face. Well, they let, really let, believe let, in let's this. Talk, they let, be let's talk about how how that works. The fact was that in this particular case, the, do you know who the person was that uh, made up the decision for for Trump and Trump went along with him? Bannon. Yeah, Bannon. It was Bannon. And, who, who uh, was and the other guy who, who uh, uh, runs the who, uh, EPA uh, thing? Who, but, uh, uh, wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Let me finish. Yeah. Who 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 was against it? Uh, uh, Ivanka. Uh, Ivanka. Also, um, who's Kushner? the guy from Texas Kushner. that ran for president? Kushner was against it. Kushner yeah, but uh, against uh, who was the uh, governor of Texas that uh, was yeah. going, uh, uh, that ran uh, uh, and uh, for president and couldn't remember one of the. Uh, Rick Perry. Rick, Rick Perry. Perry. He was Rick against Perry. it. Niggerhead Perry. Yeah, well, he was against it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that the conversation should be continued. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I, you can't just deny that there are uh, issues with, uh, and that there's the possibility of global warming. Just because I don't believe in it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, and I believe as as uh, Patrick believes that it's cyclical. But hey, that doesn't, I, I don't give I don't give a shit, Phil. Because by the time all this takes place, I'll probably be dead unless I get my wish and live forever. Well, in, in let's which, look at it this way: How many of you people have kids? Discussed. Wait a minute, Jeff. Jeff. I don't think that's what Patrick said, and, I, and I'd like to validate that. But Patrick said, I don't know. Is that correct? What, what did you say about the cyclical thing, Patrick? Yeah, I, I do believe it's cyclical. However, I'm not willing to... You're not wedded to that assumption. I'm not wedded to global warming as what's going on, because in 1975, it was uh, an ice age. I do believe there's there's climate change happening but i'm not willing to throw my eggs into one basket or another i'm willing to sit it out and wait that's why i said could it be, I could be could a it, climate change could, agnostic, right? agnostic since you're since, Jeff, since what did i say since I you're wait, since, since you're the reasonable right person right wing person on this panel patrick let me throw this at you that was how many years ago they said that 75 70 uh, how many years oh, Forty-two, 42 years ago, uh, will you Look give? Well, hold on a second. Yeah, will you give this a thought that we have more science at our disposal now than we did then? My answer to that is, and I said this earlier, was prior to 1975, they didn't have as much technology and as much science either. So I don't believe necessarily that we're any further advanced in that. Um, from, let's say, 1960 to 75, 75 was obviously more advanced. Well, here we are 42 years later, we're obviously more advanced. But in another 10 years, they could be coming up with something different that we're heading into an ice age. I don't believe science is an absolute on this. I think mm -hmm. it, it's uh, because it's, it's cyclical anyway by nature. Um, the, the thing that I am hung up on is whether or not human beings have sped it up. And that's where I'm not willing to give an inch because I don't believe in just 150 years or so of the Industrial Revolution mm -hmm. that we, in a small area of the United States, and then it migrated into India, could have, in that short period of time, cause this without it also being a natural event you, you I, said I, the problem is is you think it's all we were burning coal a whole shit lot longer than, than even 200 uh, years isn't enough it's it's a whole crap load so you're missing out about 100 years of us trying to keep ourselves warm while we were using the coal in the first place hey you but, know when i say 
you should continue the conversation, but you can't get fanatical one way or the other. Uh, you know, the guys that say there's none, and then there's the guys that say there's a lot. You know, how about meeting in the middle somewhere and, and being more realistic? How about cleaning up the ocean? How about taking out that, uh, that uh, a plastic ball in the Pacific that's the size of Texas? You there's know? five. Larger there than that. Five <laughs> yeah. land well, masses because of plastic. Right. Not and one. They discovered, they discovered a caterpillar that eats that stuff. And, uh, you know, there's all sorts of ways that you can that you can combat these things. And that's why the conversation needs to be continued. But no, no, no. You want to change you want to change the base. So this is the problem with the Republicans. They want to change the base of a conversation. But the issue is, is if you look at all of the science and, and do what Patrick did, you know, this is a little bit here. We've got a little more science here. We have good science here. We have bad science here. We're going to take a look at everything. But the base of this whole conversation was set by the Paris Agreement. And you want to come back and change that base. Well, the problem is, is the rest of the planet doesn't give a shit about what Trump well, wants to the, do. The problem is, is the Paris Agreement was all one way. And it was one way in, in, in to redistribute the wealth from the United States to everyone else. That's what, no, that's what it no, was. No, it wasn't. And, and, and the reason you can't say that was because the fact that it didn't start here. We didn't start the Paris Agreement. No. We didn't come up with the Paris Agreement. It was all of the rest of Europe that came up with it. And there is a part that you do need to look at because Patrick has a really good point. It is really all the coal burning stuff that's the issue. And I believe that we've got enough science to be able to say that the people on this planet have accelerated the natural system that the planet has going and this acceleration because of the carbon that we have burnt for so long is going to be a problem and this is what they've done they signed us up into the paris agreement we agreed not to do x y and z they signed up china into it they're working on not doing x y and z they haven't signed india because india is an islamic state of india and so they're there. We were all there except for one country. And you and your bozo backed out because he feels he can make more money beating the planet to death than he can helping the planet live. I thought India was a Hindu. Uh, they they no, go. No, somebody's out. one of those damn. Is it Pakistan? One of those is the uh, the Republic of. Well, I'll look it up. One of them is the Republic of Muslims. Pakistan is Islamic. Oh, yes. is it? Okay, thank but you. India is a Hindu, I thought. Okay. So the the issue is, is that everybody was on, the bulk of us were on board. More people were coming on board. And, and if you really wanted to get into the minutia of this, your problem is not with <clears throat> that it isn't climate change. Your problem is that they wanted the United States to pay money a in lot the form of, of of, in the form of carbon credits, yeah, and that's what you go? didn't like. Where does this money go? It, it goes in the hands of a bunch of uh, other countries to redistribute the wealth, but it's not the hundred million uh, uh, that they, that is the issue. The issue is is that we're allowing our industry to uh, be not be able to compete fairly against others because yeah, we have much higher restrictions. Everyone that has signed that agreement is not an other. So the only others that you're looking at are places like India and Pakistan well, and all of the rest of those the shit others, countries. All of the others have different levels of restrictions. We have the highest no, to Obama. No, no, we don't. Have, what we have the highest in is because want to know why we have the the highest uh, carbon point thing is because before we signed into this, we had the worst in the world we were the united states was the worst carbon polluter on the planet until we signed the paris agreement we signed until into the we dumped a bunch of money into our infrastructure so it would clean better and what year, be renee what year was the paris accord signed oh, i don't think it was more than a couple of years ago 
Was no, it well. was signed. Yeah, it was well. You know, first of all, this agreement doesn't go into effect until after Donald Trump's four years. Yeah. So it's like I think the second day he's out of office in 2020. So if he's not reelected, it could it could, you know, uh, it so could be a starter. It really is. Yeah. Well, but if he's going to renegotiate, why couldn't he re renegotiate with it in place? That's yeah, what then, a lot of people are asking. And well, then the other thing is, is he's not a good negotiator because if he was a good negotiator, he wouldn't have signed all the executive orders. Because if you knew how to negotiate and read people not true. and abuse people into signing something that they should or should not sign, that would have been something he worked that's on. That's not true, and he doesn't have to do that. Uh, no, see, that's the whole thing. That's not what executive orders were for. That's so, what they've been used for. No, that's what he used them for, but that's not what they were originally intended for. So the fact that he doesn't want to go to the House or the Senate or anybody else and negotiate all of this shit that he's been spewing, it tells us he's not that good of a negotiator. Scott, what do you what think? Scott, wait a minute. Scott, shut up a second. Scott, what do you think? Wow. Wow. Um, uh, since we're out of time almost. Uh, well, that's why I decided ever, to get around to you because it was being monopolized here by uh, has, Mr. Meyer. Have any of you ever heard of the year that there wasn't a summer? Yeah. Yeah, that was back in 18, what? Hey, we're 1816. 1816, okay, before there was all any of this. Well, I don't know. I don't, I mean, uh, uh, we right? haven't had a spring this year, have we, Jeff? Well, mm, yeah, but much, why, why did that happen, How much Scott? summer? Let, God, it, 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 people also let, listen. Let me let me just settle something here for a second. Fine, I'll just the, shut up. No, 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 that's okay. Scott. I'll, I'll just shut up. Don't yeah. worry about it. It was a volcanic explosion. No, that wasn't that wasn't the point. Point I was trying to make to you, Scott, is that global warming isn't something that because you had a uh, cold winter that there isn't global warming. No, you no. Know. What caused the cold winter? We know. Caused a volcanic eruption. A volcanic eruption. One <laughs> volcano caused. The whole world to cool off. Yeah. Yeah. The whole world in, in one year. And yet, none of you guys will believe that it, in 150 years of burning all this shit into the atmosphere, all these cars, everything like that, that might not affect the weather at all? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what you heard. That's okay, you okay then, then science is a bunch of shit, isn't it? Well, uh, you know something? Uh, 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 if, if it happens because of a volcano, that's happening because of natural conditions. It's it's you know I mean it, it there, there one are, volcano, one volcano. I mean, yeah. but that but that's a natural condition. It's Carbon not an garbage. artificial condition like fossil fuels being burned and spewed into the air so you can get from point A to point B. Well, wait. Now, coal is wasn't the only. We didn't use carbon for just cars. We before cars were invented or de during the uh, original start of cars, we were using coal to heat our houses, to yes. heat our street lamps, to run the horse, the carriage with the horse and the big engine fake we, yes. trains, trains, yeah. all the trains, yeah. Yeah. trains. Yeah. trains. That's for the street lamps. So. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it's not just you can't just say it's the car. And then we used whale oil. Uh, okay, for uh, for lamps, yeah. We use whale oil, whale, whale bones for uh, corsets for women. Boy, this one's gone fast tonight, except for watching Phil fix his monitor for most of the show. And it's not fixed. And it's not fixed. What you didn't find the right? Uh, uh, no, you know, I see at the right angle these stupid glasses when you wear trifocals. Uh, you can never see the see the right angle. Yeah. Well, anyway, oh, thank you, Phil. Word. Thank you, Patrick. Appreciate it. You, Kevin, uh, Scott, for adding to that lively atmosphere at the end. I wish you would talk more when you're there because you uh, you're you you're animated. Okay, the sky's falling. Okay, and Rob, thank you oh, so much you. for your wisdom, and Brian for your snarkiness. And Jeff, for your wise moments of, of uh, and and of course Renee for the female perspective on all of this. Although there is no female perspective to this conversation we had tonight, but it's still great to have you here from Hawaii. Everybody, wave goodbye, would you? Okay, bye, goodbye, folks. Bye, okay, bye, thank Little you so much. Tape. Okay, thanks so much for being here. I hope you'll all be here tomorrow night as well. And. Uh, 
Uh, if we get a little animated, it's not that anybody's feelings are going to get hurt or anything like that. I had to change cameras during the middle of the show, if you wonder what, why all of a sudden I was like that. I don't know why. It happens occasionally. But I just replaced it with another camera. So, But I didn't have to find an Allen wrench to do it with, Phil. Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night, uh, same time. Uh, next uh, is uh, Jack and Amy with The Intersection, followed at um, 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time with uh, Connections. And in the meantime, I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same station in life. And if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.